Are you ready to be fired up? Because I sure am. Today I've got Park Howell and he is an a storyteller, and you're going to learn all about how to use stories to sell in any type of industry, business, or profession. So sit back and ready to be fired up. Are you wanting a kickstart on your business and you want to learn how to be the go to professional in your industry? Well, guess what? I've got a challenge for you. It's five days of coaching. It's brand new. Just go to kristamayshore.com slash client conversion. That's kristamayshore.com slash client conversion. And you'll get a training with me for five straight days. That's going to help kickstart you as the go-to professional in your industry. So sign up and I'll see you there. Hey, Park, how are you? Welcome. Krista, I'm doing great. I'm sorry you're not feeling uh, totally up to snuff, but I I really... commend you for your fortitude to keep this show going through thick and through thin. Uh, you're, I know. I was telling Park that I kind of feel like I'm sick. I might have the COVID. <laughs> like, oh no. Just Not got back COVID. from- I know, I know. But um, it's, it's, I'm excited to be here. I'm actually really excited to interview you. I was on your podcast, which was really, really fun. And your podcast, what's the name of it again? It's called The Business of Story. And you were featured on it this week. Oh, and, good. And it's such a fun conversation. You shared so many great- ideas and knowledge bombs with our listeners. I can't wait to hear the feedback. It just dropped yesterday. Oh, good. Okay. So, so be sure to check out that podcast and, and, and listen there, but I will tell, so somebody told me this saying, it was like facts tell stories sell. And I think that is so true. So I want you to talk to us a little bit about, you know, your background and what, you know, how, what, what you do exactly. And then we'll get into it. Yeah, well, thanks for asking. So I have been in the advertising, branding, marketing world for 35 years. So remember when the Beatles had like 10,000 hours of practice to get to where they are? Well, I got like 30,000 hours of it. So just to kind of date myself a little bit. I ran my own ad agency in Phoenix, Arizona for 20 of those years. And Krista, along about 2006, I realized that advertising as we knew it no longer worked. And it was primarily because of technology. You know, our our brands, our clients used to own the influence of mass media, but because of technology, e-commerce, social media, the masses have become the media. And I realized that we had to just completely change the approach to everything from branding, advertising, marketing, to sales training, to HR, to how we speak to each other across the board. And that's when I went on my own little quest to figure out what the hell do I do because what we're doing right now no longer works. That's when I found story and really started studying it and applying it in the world around us. And it first was a kind of a science project to see if it really worked. And then it blew me away at how powerful it was. And I found that I had much more of a love for teaching and training and coaching people how to use stories in business to grow their brand, to grow their sales force, to grow their teams and their people that I mothballed my ad agency after 20 years and now for the last five years i've worked around the world consulting teaching coaching and speaking on the power of story to help leaders of purpose-driven brands excel through the stories they tell i had to get my little billboard in there that's what i do (laughs) okay great so so tell me so i mean you know when you talked or we talked you said you know in every aspect of business in the human resources in in your sales team everywhere explain how like what exactly do you mean by, you know, stories can enhance the brand and it can really help leaders? And, and you know, what would someone, what would be their first st- steps and start on doing yeah. this? Well, you think about it for your viewers and your listeners, yourself, myself. When we were raised, no one really taught us that much other than English lit and that sort of thing about stories and how you use them, how we homo sapiens use them in our social dynamic and as an organizing force to create things that happen in the world. What were we taught instead? Spreadsheets, logic, market number dynamics, you know? And so we have to show up every day and we have to sound smart, we think. Look smart, we think. So what do we do? Is we spew a bunch of numbers, facts, stats, and data on people thinking they're going to get what we're talking about. But our brains, our limbic system, they are story uh, systems, processes. They're not logic processors. So we have to tell stories to be able to connect the context of what we're trying to say in business to the actual human dynamic because it's simply how our bodies and our brains are wired to make meaning out of the madness 
of being human beings. That happens through the context of a story, an emotionally told, charged story to transport your audience, not through this facts, stats, charts, and graphs that we're trained to lead with. Um, and that was my realization. And when I started using it, I saw how it grew brands by like as much as 600% because now their people, their homo sapiens, us storytelling monkeys could rally around a story that had a crystal clear vision, mission. It led us into a brighter tomorrow. It took us somewhere. Once so we buy into talking, that story, we back it up with the data. So you're not just talking about like the story, a personal story of somebody like, or that, because that's what I was thinking when you were saying story, you're talking about like a vision or am I wrong? Oh, it, all of them actually. So let me give you an example. And here's one that, I, that, that is, is fun. I was in pre-COVID, uh, 2019 in March, I was in Melbourne, Australia doing some work out there and met with the boyfriend of my wife's best friend out there. And he was a Swedish, uh, late 50s car wash salesman. He would import very expensive car washes from Germany and sell them and service them in Melbourne and the surrounding areas around Australia. Interesting thing about him, his name was Per, P-E-R. When he was a young man, early 20s, he sailed by himself a solo expedition from Stockholm, Sweden to Melbourne, Australia. He was on the open seas for about eight months. Wow. And so once he got there, he loved it, fell in love. And so he, we were sitting there having wine and he looked at me with his Swedish accent and he goes, you know, this storytelling thing, I don't really see how that possibly works, Park. I mean, what, it, I, you know, he was like diminishing the impact. Yeah. So I asked him, I said, Pear, have you ever, when you were sailing the open seas by yourself, did you ever have that Tom Hanks time, uh, you know, when he's like at sea and almost dead and like a whale comes up and it, you know, splashes water on him, you know, some otherworldly event. And he kind of laughed. He goes, no, 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 didn't possibly happen. And then after a long pause, he says, well, there was that one time. And I said, well, tell me that time. He goes, well, I was down the Galapagos Islands, again, on this 21 foot or 24 foot sailboat all by himself, and he was trying to navigate this channel in the Galapagos Islands. The sun was starting to go down, and he realized that he didn't know the lay of the water and the land, that he decided he would anchor, wake up in the morning, and then and take it on under the safety of the light of day. He had no GPS. He was dead reckoning. He had a compass, a watch, and that's how you navigated back in the day. Well, he said, that morning he woke up and he asked me, he goes, have you ever heard that crazy screeching sound that dolphins make in the wild? And I go, nope, never have. He goes, well, it's really eerie. And I woke up to that and I went above board and I saw eight dolphins swimming frantically around my sailboat, screeching this horrible screech. And I go, what were they doing? And he said, I looked around and I realized the tide had gone out much further than I had anticipated. And he said, within another 30 minutes, myself and my boat would have been impaled on the lava rock below. And I said, do you think they were actually warning you? And he goes, well, what else are they doing? And I go, that is an amazing story. And then he sat for a second, Chris, and he looked at me and he got this like shitting smile on his face. And he goes, I just realized something. And I go, Why, what's that, Perry? He said, Every time I had a big sale of a car wash going in, it always followed one of my sailing stories. And he was like puzzled. And I said, Pear, why do you think that is? He goes, I have no idea. But is that what you're talking about? And I said, exactly. In the telling of that personal story, whatever it happened to be, um, what, what were you communicating to your potential customers? that you were industrious, that you would take risk, but that you would have their back and you would have their courage to see them through thick and through thin as they make this big expensive investment in this car wash and that you would be there for them to service it as a part of their crew moving on. You built so much trust in their mind by that simple little adventure tale that said something about you that there would be no other salesperson that could compete with that. That is the power story, a personal story told to build a professional brand. Got it. Okay. So, so that makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. So tell me how would a, like a regular 
average professional, you know, a professional business person that's, let's just say, um, a real estate agent, a lender, an attorney, an insurance agent, a, a, a doctor, a window washer, somebody who, uh, a multi-level marketer, how would yeah. they use story in their business? And where do they start? I mean, what, what, how do you even right. know? Oh, I've got a story. Like, what, what, how do I use fabulous it? Fabulous question. Fabulous. So, Krista, let, can I use you as yeah. a test subject? So, yes, totally. You had remarkable success as a real estate agent, what ranked among the top one percenters and what is the one of the most, if not the most commoditized industries in the world. You know, I mean, tons of competition. You were very successful. So my question to you is, why did you go into real estate as a person, as a human being? And did you ever tell your origin story to someone so that they could look at you and trust you? Say, wow, she is not in this just to make money. She is in this for a bigger purpose. Do you have that story? So I, the reason I got into real estate it was because my daughter had gotten sick and um, she almost died. She, we were at Oakland Children's mm-hmm. Hospital for a couple of mu- couple weeks, like three weeks. She had spinal meningitis, um, multiple strokes, and a ki- she only has one kidney, so one of her kidneys failed. So that mm-hmm. caused... Um, uh, Anyways, so she was sick. So they told me when we were in there that but multiple times that she was probably not going to make it through the night and she was going to die. And she ended up living, but they told me that I should expect her to have, you know, severe mental disabilities, possibly be blind from the high fevers, possibly have deaf and and just like I should expect some really bad times. I was a teacher at the time. And so when that happened, I left teaching to stay to go home to be a full-time mom and stay home with her to be able to give her, you know, as much as she needed. And then I got into real estate just to kind of be a part-time real estate agent so that I could make money still um, while taking care of her. And then very shortly after that, after leaving my teaching profession and my daughter, um, you know, being home and she was better, I found that my husband was having an affair. So I ended up having to like dive into real estate full-time, but I, but I never tell that. I tell that story when I'm, uh, from coaching and my coaching side of it to kind of let people know my background, but I never told that story in real estate. Like when I was a real estate agent, I never used it at all to, you know, okay. I didn't really tell anybody. <laughs> so what was the story that you did use? Why did people trust you? Why were you so successful? What was it about you that said, I want her on my team? I don't know. I mean, I think people can just, you know, I, well, I, I used to say I was a teacher and I loved, I loved teaching. And that was one of the things that made me a little bit different than most agents was that I, I was a teacher at heart and I love to teach people and, you know, teachers are very caring. And um, I seem to attract a lot of teachers and doctors, a lot of teachers and like hero type people, you know, police officers, nurses, they seem to be attracted to me, but I don't really, didn't really have a story. I don't know. I don't think. <laughs> so what I'm, what I'm driving for, you do, you just don't want You're like pear. I've got to sit here and have this big long pause until it gets so uncomfortable. You'll finally tell it, but we won't do that right now. Here's what I want your viewers and listeners to do. I want you to go back and find a time in your life. It could be when you were a little kid. It could have been high school, college. It could have been a few weeks ago. I don't know. But this this time in your life where you had this surprising aha moment where a curiosity took you down a road and you didn't even know where it was going and it sparked something in you, a passion in you, that when you cross that intersection between this curiosity and this passion, it was like, what you were meant to do in the world. And it may not be like this godsend thing of what you were meant to do. There could be several of these that outline who you are or inform who you are today. Find that story. Tell it very, very quickly. You tell it using these five primal elements of story that I teach, a timestamp. When did it happen? It hooks our limbic system into leaning in because then Krista's about ready to tell me about something must have happened because she put a timestamp on it. A location stamp, where did it happen? Location is really, really powerful in our brains to understand the context or meaning of what's going on. A central character in this case, that would be you, the, the, the storyteller. Then action and surprise. What happened that you went, wow, that, that blew me away. And it has informed who you are today. It makes your business point for you, why you do what you do. So I give you a, an example out of my life. Uh, when I was, I, I played the piano, as you can see, I have like a piano showroom here. I got a degree in music composition and theory because I just loved to understand why music worked and what was it about it? What were the, you know, the, the, the mechanics of it? 
knowing I wouldn't make a living as a composer, I also got a degree in journalism and communications. And I thought these two worlds would intersect beautifully for the advertising world. I call it creative commerce. So I understand how the brain thinks, but I've got the communication chops to be able to talk about it. Well, lo and behold, after many years of running my ad agency and looking for that answer, what do we do now? I found storytelling pri primarily because our, our middle child, our son Parker, was going to film school at Chapman University in Orange. I said, send me your books when you're done with them. Since I paid for them, I want to know how do they teach you storytelling? Well, Krista, that's when I realized that music composition and story composition in theory are essentially the exact same thing because every song tells a story. I overlaid my interest in that into story and what I had been doing with my ad agency. And that has led me to where I am today because I have found, because nobody teaches this story stuff, that there is a huge market out there for me to teach people the composition and theory of storytelling so that they can have more impact and more power in their life in their personal brand to grow their influence or their professional brand to grow their business. So, That's one little example of a story and I use it all the time to share with people. So how, okay, so by the way, I went to Chapman University in Orange County, but I went to the extension oh, in Concord. Yeah, that's where I got my, my master's degree in education awesome. from there. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so how does somebody go about using the story? So now you said, well, here's a story. So how do you go about using it? How do you insert it into your business or profession in a way that will make sense and, and can help, you know, align with your audience and have more sales? There's four categories of stories that I like to use and I'm teaching this with a sales training right now. Um, uh, the connection story first and foremost. So just think if you are sitting across from a prospect and they don't know you, maybe you've been referred into them but you're trying to get to know them. Um, you want to do of course as much research as you can to understand and empathize with where they are, who they are and what they're about. And then you want to tell a similar story, a story about you and why you do what you do that they can relate to and connect with so that I can say, oh, Krista's just like me, or she's got an interest that the same interest that I have to so start building that, that bond. Connection. You can tell that story in under two minutes. So okay. that's just a little connection story. You're not talking about your resume. You're not talking about your accomplishments or your accolades. You are sharing a little connection story about you. The next one then is a, a moment of change or a moment of influence. So you move on to the next thing. And if you're selling a house saying, oh, you know, you've lived in this other house, but you're ready to move on. You're selling it because of this. And you are looking at maybe the old way of, of, of selling it. There's new technology out there that you should really consider because they can do this and this and this for you. So you tell them a story of change and maybe you share a customer that went through something similar that they did. Again, you're not sharing resumes or, or accolades. You are just talking about real world events. So whenever anyone presents a change initiative to you, what's the first thing your brain does? Survival mode? Oh, I couldn't possibly. <laughs> Yes, no, that, yes. That, won't, that may have worked for them, but that'll never work for me because we love to be in status quo. We believe there's safety in status quo. And if you're selling anything, you have to shake people out of status quo to get them to move on. So you've got to have what we call an influence story to overcome their anti-story. They've mm -hmm. just told themselves a story, maybe totally fictitious, but it's an objection you have to overcome. So you just tell a better story. You tell a story about someone else you helped that had that exact same mindset and didn't want to do what they don't want to do, but did ultimately do it with you and have this wonderful outcome. So that's, that's the third category of story. So now you've got them nodding and you got them leaning in. And if you haven't sold them yet, you tell the final story. And that's just a simple little success story. It's kind of built off of what you just did, but you might bring in a different customer this time story. Krista, I know Mary, and she wanted the same thing that you wanted, and we did this, and the outcome was this. And that's the simplest of all of them, a simple little testimonial that's focused on them, not you. And all you've done this whole time is to share human context through these stories to get them to nod, to lean in, to say, you're like me, I trust you, you've demonstrated success, let's do this thing. It's developing rapport and that type of thing too, you know, and I, I like the last one, especially, which is really good is, 
one of my trainers I've had in the past has said, yeah, you always want to make sure that you've got stories of different types of people that are like them, right? So just like you, you said, yeah. think about a scenario that matches the person that's in front of you that's happened to somebody in the past because then they realize, okay, she can handle me and she's dealt with the situation before and they automatically feel more comfortable. Uh oh, I think we just got a little quick, really quick, quick, quick uh, park froze. So you can still hear me. Not a family. Not an organization, but about a single individual and how you help them through. So and maybe you're working with a couple, but tell the story about from the wife's perspective or the husband's perspective. They can both be a part of the story, but you want to have that singular perspective because that's what connects with your audience, not multitudes, a single, single person, a singular narrative each time. Got it. Okay. That makes total sense. That makes total sense. Our internet's a little bit off right now, so hopefully we're, you're getting all this. You getting it all? Okay. Okay. Good. Um, yep. I saw you froze up there for a minute and I just kept rolling, but now I think we're back. Okay. Okay. Good. So really quickly, um, I know that many people will, will talk about, you know, having a personal story in your marketing. So during marketing, so how would you recommend in the marketing phase, um, introducing different types of stories to really connect with your audience? Well, as you had said earlier, you've got to make sure that your audience can connect with your story. So that makes you have to take the time to understand and empathize with your audience and really know who they are so that the story you tell is going to be appropriate to them. Mm -hmm. That's hard. Most of us are about me, I, you know, let me tell you about what I've got going on here. It requires story listening to take a deep breath, shut up. Do your research and listen to them and really understand where they are coming from. Then and only then do you kind of, you know, decipher or sift through your library of stories and think, I think Krista would really appreciate this one story about Tom. Then you tell that story. But it requires listening. You really have to understand who that audience is and what they care about. That makes sense. So do you have, so for me, you know, I, I have trouble with that, with doing stories and relate and doing, you know, relating my story. So how, how would you recommend somebody gets their repertoire of stories? How do you go about getting stories so that, that, and that they are clear in your brain, they come to fruition when you need them? Write them down. And you don't have to write the entire thing down. You can just say that time when as a memory jogger and then practice them and use those five primal elements of story, time, stamp, location, stamp, central character, action, something takes place with surprise that comes out of that action that makes your business point for you. Write those five little elements down and then collect them in those different categories. A connection story, when am I going to use this to build rapport with somebody? You know, they, that story of change, when am I going to, you know, pop up and have a whole list of these stories. And it could be from any part of your business. I'm working with a medical company right now out of Chicago. They have three pillars that they talk about when they are selling their product. Well, each one of their pillar, I'm working with their salespeople to have four of those stories for each one of those pillars, connection, change, and influence story and success. So every person ends up with a dozen stories at their disposal to use at any time. And, he, and you could use Evernote, you can put them into a Word doc, you can put them in whatever. The idea is to be able to recall them, pull them up and just read through it and just remind you, oh, this is a great story that I think I could use during this particular pitch or, 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 or walking a customer through something. So you take, have the idea is to have each of the different pillars connection, you know, and then have around four stories for each one that you can yeah. relate to and bring up. And every them. day, write them down. Just, just make a goal. Every day, I'm going to write down three moments in time that were significant, that have shaped who I am today, that I believe a customer can relate to. And it could be either about you or something, an impact you had on a customer. And, and just write them down that time when, that time when you don't have to write out the whole story because most of these are delivered in oral storytelling anyways. And you start building that story library or that story bank that you can go to and pull up depending on what the, the situation is. You'll find one story will spark three or four others in you. Oh. And you might start by saying, I don't have a story. Nobody really cares about my story. Everybody says that. You just have to find peace you know, meditate on it, sit down and just start writing what comes to mind because everybody has gold mines of stories that are ready to be unearthed. It's just a matter of taking the time to do that. It's so funny. And my, uh, my, my first book that I wrote, Sell 100 Homes, 
I, my editor was like, talk to me about how you got here, you know? And so I, I kind of told her and she, of course, really was asking all these questions and made me hone in on it. But I tell the story about, you know, being, get, going through the divorce and sitting at home in my kitchen and being sad and my, um, the new girlfriend picking up my daughters, driving my car and how I was alone at Thanksgiving and looking back in the backyard and it was just this desolate and it was like a huge defining moment about, about my like success. And I cannot tell you how many people, both men and women were like, I read your book and your story just aligned so much with me. And I, you know, I've gone through a divorce too, or my husband left me or my wife left me, or, you know, I, I've, it's so hard and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I'm like, oh my gosh, really tons of people. I have just, I've gotten emails about it, you know, like your story just totally, and it helped them, you know, just realize I was a real person, I think. So I, I it definitely is very, very true. It's, it's Did very, it surprise you? Did that reaction surprise you? Yeah, it actually, it, it's, it does. It, it doesn't as much now because I've heard, I hear it so much, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but when it happened at first, I was very, very shocked that people even like, because to me, it was like, well, everyone gets divorced, not probably not a big deal, you know, even though I wasn't raised to get divorced, but it was, it was a big deal for me, you know, and, um, mm -hmm. and it is for a lot of people. And so it just, it just helps you have a connection with people, you know? So it was, and it was nice that people cared enough to write and, you know, tell me oh. how they felt. So did you feel uncomfortable sharing those stories at first? Well, oh yeah, gosh, I absolutely did. Like really weird, you know, um, I went to my most cried. I was like, Oh my God, this is, I don't even care about anymore. But I, you know, almost cried talking about it. Cause when you're when you're on stage and things like that they they well you you asked me all these questions you were drilling like crazy i remember and i was like oh my god i i, I couldn't believe how deep you were going i'm like this is really intense <laughs> you <should go> <laughs> you'll have to hear her show on the business of story yeah that was a great conversation and you were so much fun to talk to because you were so open and why you do what you do and and you know that old axiom that says or is it axiom axiom that says people don't buy from companies they buy from people so oh, true. The more vulnerable you can be and just be open, you know, you don't have to be Pollyannish about it and wah, wah, wah about it. It's just like, here's what I've experienced and here's what drives me to help you today. You can share that story. And you know what? If they say, yeah, not for me, then that's great because they weren't for you. But chances Absolutely. are they're going to say, wow, look at she, she confided in me. He told me something that I was surprised to hear, but, but revealed something about him. We're opening our worlds up to each other when we do it. You can lead with, you know, the top 1% real estate agent in the world. You can lead with your resume all you want. None of that stuff matters. It just doesn't matter. People are going to buy from you. Now, they may go and check you out afterwards. Like, wow, I really liked her. And I really think she's right for us. Let's go ahead and just jump on her website just to make sure everything. Oh, yep. She's done this. Perfect. Let's go. All they're doing is trying to... Uh, justify their purchase of you but they yes, already people bought buy in. with logic they, they buy with emotion and justify with logic or without right, a doubt you, whatever yeah so yeah um yes yeah, so you're, you're emotionally meeting them okay so so um now let's just say and we need to wrap it up here it's been about 30 minutes and my podcast is usually 30 minutes long but i, I want to ask you a few more questions and that is this so let's just say there's just you know there's somebody like a real estate professional all right. Let's just let's yep. just use real estate as an example, um, or a mortgage officer, and and they, they're I mean they're thinking, well, how am I going to bring a story into like before someone even meets me to to really kind of bring their audience in? How would you how would you suggest they use their story before they're ever face to face with somebody in their marketing efforts? So on your website, number one. So when you get to your about page, don't be boring. Because when was the last time you were bored into buying anything? Here's an example. Working with a, a real estate uh, professional out in New Hampshire who has just gone through my Build a Better Brand Story Sprint, which is a three-week process that anybody can go through, and I help them uh, codify their story. Her and her husband started, and they've been running a very successful uh, brokerage out there for the last seven years, and she said, here's why. She goes, when we were young, and we had our young family, we bought our first house, and it was the most miserable experience ever. Nobody coached, coached us. We got in way over our head. We couldn't afford it. We ended up losing it. We went into bankruptcy. We got out of that. We got our act together. We bought a second house, and that one we love, and it works for us. I realized there was not a person around that was looking out for us. All they were doing was selling me a house. 
Now, all we do is to make sure that we ha find the right house for the right people, the right time, the right place at the right cost. And we will not sell you anything that you cannot afford. Oh. So that's her thing. And she can tell her story from her personal experience. Now, I just went through that story in 90 seconds or less. Yeah. You know? I mean, but if, if, if she is now competing against the regular Joe or Joanne uh, real estate agent out there, who would you go with? You're going to go with someone who had an experience that says, I'm actually your advocate. Yeah. I'm not your representative. Can... I am going to make sure you buy the right house or you won't buy a house from us. This you know? isn't about me. It's about you, right? It's powerful. So yeah. that's how you do it. You go in. You, what, are the, what are the problems that people face day in and day out that they worry about in trying to get a mortgage? We're just trying. We're finishing building a house right now. And I just got word today that our, we paid cash for a lot of it from a house we sold. But we got still you know, several hundred grand worth of mortgage that we've got to, we've got to cover on it. And I've been waiting for three, you know, four weeks Am I approved or am I not approved? And they're kind of waiting on appraisal and whatever. Well, today I heard we're approved. Now, I didn't Yay. really fear it, but there's that uncertainty. So now, if I'm a competing real estate person with that mortgage guy, and the mortgage guy's done a good job with me, I would like to have had a little bit more communication. I might, I might coach them in saying, Krista, I'm going to sell you this house or you're going to take, you know, we need to get a loan on this. You're asking for this amount. It's going to take about five weeks and we're going to have to go through this, but I'm going to check in with you every Thursday at 9 a.m. just to let you know what's going on, even if nothing is going on. But I know you are going to have uncertainty until we sign on this dotted line. And oh, by the way, I'm pretty sure everything's going to be fine, but until it's fine, you have uncertainty. So why couldn't you be the uncertainty mortgage person? Say, so you're going to feel this until you get that thing, but I'm going to make sure to assuade that. I'm going to be that person there because I know what you're going through. I'm not just going to go through the motions. I'm going to take care of you every step of the way. That's yes. what, you know what I mean? I like Figure it. out what the problem is. What's the pain point? The mortgage. I want the mortgage, but yeah, but what's the emotional thing? Uncertainty. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? I want to manage that uncertainty so you don't have to worry about it. And we're going to make it happen. And so many people, I think, in professions, they don't, they forget what their clients are going through and mm -hmm. they're nervous and their pains because it's so, you know, our professions are just so, they're, they're us, right? We know all about it. We forget the person on the other side, what they, their needs are, what their wants are, how to make them feel more comfortable. Just in real estate, I think everyone should have to sell their house at least once every five years. I just sold mine recently and I was like, this is so stressful. And I, I it is. oh my gosh, it just reminded me of my poor clients, you know, what they are going through. And now my poor, my poor agents that are and that i'm helping learn to be the best real estate agent they can be because they are dealing with these people all the time so it's it's yeah. a lot well park that was wonderful i really appreciate you know, your energy and your enthusiasm i can tell just how much you believe in this and i absolutely i've seen it work in my business so i know it is very very true so how can people learn more about you and try to get some more you know you know learn more how you can help them so here i've got my logo business of story that's where you can find me business of story my book Brand Bewitchery, How to Wield the Story Cycle System to Craft Spellbinding Stories for Your Brand. It's not just a branding book. It actually teaches you all of these storytelling techniques in it that we, and many more that, that we covered today. And her story in here that I told you about, and I teach through anecdote and through storytelling. So it's not a mind-numbing, theoretical read. It's showing story in action and giving you the framework so that you can use these exact same things in your business so you can own your local market no matter what kind of profession you're in. So Brand Bewitchery by Park Howell. Okay, go look that up. Amazon, Apple Books businessofstory.com. I'm there for you. And be sure to go to his Business of Story podcast. Look at the one that I was just on. It actually aired yesterday, which is December 21st. Yeah. So look at yep. that one. Go check that one out. Um, You're our Merry was... Christmas episode. Isn't that Oh, cool? I love it. Yeah. He'll be like, um, he, he'll, he's drilled me too and really like asked question after question after question. I was like, this is crazy, but it was fun. Um, so go <laughs> ahead and jump in on that. And then Park, I always ask everyone to please give one little piece of advice, whether it's business or personal, what would that be to help our listeners? Here it is. As you are studying story and bringing it into your world, I want you to always remember that the most important story you will ever tell is the story you tell yourself. So make sure it's a great one. 
Ooh, I love that. That's so true. And we all know I talk about mindset all the time. It's like what you think and what is what you get. So whatever story you tell yourself is exactly what's going to happen. So treat yourself nicely. Tell yourself a good story because it's you can do anything you want as long as you believe it. Park, thank you so much. You've been wonderful. I appreciate you. And just thanks for being here. Everyone say bye to Park. And we all. I just want to tell you how much I appreciate you spending a little bit of your day with me. It means so much. And I know your time is valuable. So thanks for spending it with me. And as always, remember, it's great to listen. But if you don't actually implement, nothing happens. So be sure to reach out to Park and get his book. And I will see you next time. Hey there, I have a brand new podcast called Fired Up with Krista Mayshore, where I bring my high energy right to your ears. This podcast is available on all your favorite podcast platforms. So do me a favor, go subscribe and leave a review. All this information is free and I cannot wait to teach you everything I know. Thanks so much for watching my video. You can learn more about how to be a successful real estate professional by watching other videos that I have. And be sure to subscribe to my channel. And as always, make it a great home selling and buying day.